When I was younger, I was loud, energetic, and creative. I think I just liked things that were alive. <laughs> I would like climb trees, I still do that. <laughs> so I would like actually dress up in the house and then I would go outside and like make up whatever I wanted and run around outside. Sitting in the tree feels like you're completely held and like at peace, just like in the tree. So I was homeschooled and I was always at home and I just didn't feel safe or accepted. Like me asking questions instead of people explaining to me, it was negative comments like, you should already know that. Or like people telling me to be quiet a lot because I used to talk a lot as a kid. So then that was a huge thing like, oh, you're being annoying, like shut up. So then it just, after a while, it just kind of got to me. It was like, okay, well, I just won't talk to you. Sometimes if I was super upset, I would just kind of like hit my head against something or like pinch, I would pinch myself a lot. As I got older, like it wasn't helping, it wasn't doing anything. Then I was about 14 and I got introduced to self-harm by a friend who's also kind of going through the same. And then I had like a Tumblr at the time and things on Tumblr are really explicit and really easy to find. And it was like, other people do this and like for this reason and that reason, and it was relatable. And that was what led me to like, this is a way for me to cope that will actually work. So cutting basically, it shut down my personality in a sense because it, it just made me numb to everything. When it started, it was like, it was a way to fix myself. It was just a really bad cycle of like, oh, I, I want to be the same person that I was like when I was a little kid. And then I was like, but I also don't want that part of myself because that's the part that people don't like. And I don't want that part because that's the part that's not enough for anyone else. I was living for other people basically. And then it escalated into like this place where I was just so desperate like for help, but it just never got noticed by anyone. So then it just kept getting worse and kept getting worse because then it was like, people are gonna notice, but no one's gonna say anything and no one's gonna help me. Everything from that point on was just like, who cares if I live or die? So I had this dream and I was in this bedroom. It was a really nice, fancy bedroom and all the colors were like gold and red and like really warm and cozy. Even just looking around, you felt like at home in that place. And the windows were open and there was someone standing by the window. As soon as I looked at the person, I knew that it was God. And he closed the curtains and that was like really symbolic for me. Cause it was just like, you can choose to like get up and like open the windows and do whatever you want. Or you can choose to stay in bed and like just like sleep or whatever. And the fact that he was giving me a choice really impacted our relationship because I felt like he's not going to back away because I don't want to do anything. He's still going to be there and he's still going to like be feeding into me. And it's completely up to me whether I want to do it or not. So one of the last nights at camp when we were doing worship, I know that being here I kind of have to make a decision as to whether I want to like keep blocking God out or like actually let him in. There was an altar call and I went up and I'm not, I don't really know what happened in that moment. I just remember like being on the floor and like just like really crying, like seriously crying in the grossest way. And then one of the camp leaders came up to me after a while and was like, hey, like what's going on? Do you want to talk about it? And like, I didn't want to talk about it, but <laughs> I just kind of like, I just decided to tell her everything and I like blurted everything out. And it was like things that I was ashamed about like stuff going on in my family and with my friends and like 
she didn't really address everything that I had said. She kind of more focused on the fact that I told her that I had been cutting. And she like asked me if I would let her see and like take off my wristbands. And I was like, no, <laughs> but I didn't say that. Um, so I was like, okay, and I, I like, I took them off. And after I got like the last one off, it was like a vulnerable thing to like show her the thing that I was so ashamed about and like so afraid to show people. But when I realized that no one was actually noticing or like making a big deal about it if they did, that was kind of like a lesson about shame for me because it was like, shame isn't real. It's, it's, a, it's a lie that we believe and it's, it's a lie from the devil and it prevents connection and it stands in the way and it's not a real thing. And as soon as you're able to like push past that and let people in, um, even like even if it's a really small thing, like if you only tell one person, even that is like a really big step, and that really opens up the way for you to realize that like there's not anything wrong with you. Like you're completely normal and you're totally fine. And the things that you struggle with, they make you a better person and they set you apart. They're they're not something that you should be ashamed about. So I was still struggling with self-harm after camp and my small group leader actually didn't know that I was still struggling with it but she told me that I should read the like medical view of um, Jesus' crucifixion and when I started reading it I wasn't into it because I was like I know this story and like it sucks that you did that for us Jesus but like I didn't, I didn't feel anything I was just like okay because I just heard it so many times um, and then as I was reading they went into detail about how he was whipped and like I kind of had to step back at that moment and I think I asked him I was kind of like why like why did you do that why why would you go through something like that cuz like the cross was bad but they they just made it so much worse with the whipping and he was like showing me the scars on like his wrist and stuff and then he turned around and he showed me his back and like his back was just covered in scars and it was it looked horrible and I was looking at it and I was like they're more extreme but hey like they kind of look like mine and I said that out loud to him and he turned around and he was like he was like yeah but they shouldn't like the whole reason I went through that whipping and the whole reason I I died and went through all that pain was so that you didn't have to go through it and so that you didn't have to be punished for every little thing that you do and it's just not something that you should feel like you have to be punished for and it's not something that should have happened because your body is supposed to be scar free and mine is supposed to carry the weight of your sin. I realized that it doesn't matter where we go, where we are, God is everywhere with us. So everywhere we go, we belong because we're with God. I can belong with my family because God's in my family. And I can belong with my friends because God is in those relationships. And I can walk into a room and it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks. It doesn't really matter what they're doing because I know that I belong here because I live in my dad's world. <laughs> so. One of the things that God gave me back was my voice. So I'm able to like, I'm actually, I'm able to like think even, cause before it was just like, oh, like I was never really thinking about anything cause I was so cut off from myself. But like, I have so much to say to everyone and I, I love talking and I, I am really loud <laughs> again. And I'm just like, I can feel the life inside of me and it's not just like, oh, I'm alive. It's like, oh, like I have life and I'm so full of energy and I just, I want to connect with everyone and I want to like, I want to hear what people have to say and I have so much to say back to them and it, it's like the sense of confidence in myself and my own voice that I didn't have or like I had and then I, it got taken from me, I guess, and, and now it's back and I like, it's, it's mine and I own it and it, it sets me apart and it makes me so much better and it's accepted. <laughs> My name is Rina and I am loud. I am energetic <laughs> and I am creative.